Light is arguably the most important element to a photograph. So what happens when you're out photographing an image and you didn't get the light that you were hoping for? Well, the easiest solution would be to use On One Photo Raw to relight your scene. Let's use local adjustments and some creative editing to relight and manipulate specific areas in a photograph. If you enjoy the video, please hit that like button and as always, subscribe to our channel for all new tip and trick videos. So inside of Photo Raw here, I have this image and it's a bit flat. Um, there's not a whole lot going on when it comes to the lighting. We have a little bit of light coming in in the background here, but I think the bench could use, you know, just a, a bit of revamping and a bit of life. And an easy way to do that is through local adjustments because we can then mask those specific adjustments into really anywhere in our image that we want to. So before we jump into local adjustments, let's just head into our develop tab and we can kind of set the, the scene a little bit. And an easy way to do that is just to use AI Auto here. If I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, that's a pretty good job of just elevating the light a bit. It adds in a bit of contrast. One thing I think we should do is just make sure that the true black isn't so intense. So if I pull down or if I hold down the J key on my keyboard, you can see I have a lot of true black in here. And I don't want that much true black, or at least yet. So I'm just going to pull that back to zero. And then I'm going to add in some contrast with the contrast slider. And that's going to make sure I have some contrast, but I don't have so much of that true black in the photograph. So now let's head over to our local adjustments tab here. And I'm going to rename this first adjustment darken. We're going to be using this adjustment to darken the areas in our scene that we want to be a bit more shadowed. And then we'll paint in another local adjustment to add in light. And by using those two local adjustments independently, we can really create our own sort of lighting in this environment. So we're using the darken one for this local adjustment, and it's automatically set to darken anyway whenever you apply a new local adjustment. So I have the exposure at negative one here. It's what I want. So I'm going to head up here to the top tool modifier bar, and I'm going to make sure my brush size is quite large maybe not that large, maybe around 800 or so. And I can modify the brush size with the bracket keys on my keyboard. The right bracket key will increase the size and the left bracket key will decrease the size. So now let's just paint this on to pretty much everywhere in the scene that we think is going to have a more shadowed look to it. And depending on your photograph and then the environment and your subject and what you want to be illuminated, this could be really anywhere in the photograph. I'll make this area a bit shadowed as well. Actually, let's lower the opacity for that one. So I'll lower the opacity of my adjustment brush for this left side so it's not so intense. Just like that. And then I'll paint under there as well, because that would be pretty dark. Perfect. So if we turn this darken adjustment off and on, it's pretty intense, but it's also adding in a lot of contrast and it's making sure that that image isn't so flat. And we can always modify the opacity to this adjustment l later, but I think for now, this is just a nice uh, starting point. So let's add another adjustment and we're going to rename this one light. So we have our darken adjustment and we have our light adjustment. So let's just select lighten. It's going to be quite intense. And what I'm also going to do aside from increasing the exposure here is I'm going to increase the midtones as well. And I'll just maybe add in a little bit of contrast so that's not so flat. And again, it's going to be pretty intense, but we can always, you know, fine tune it later on. So I'm just going to use a bit smaller of a brush size. And I'm just going to paint this adjustment into the bench here. The bench and then some of the other areas within the photograph. And we'll also paint this in in there as well. We sort of have this, have this trail of light coming from this area leading into our bench there. That looks pretty good just like that. And again, I'm going to make it quite intense. You can always tone it down later on, but that looks pretty good just like that. So I'm just going to 
go over to the light adjustment. Let's lower the opacity. And then we'll bring in the light as we as we see fit. And I may pull up on it too strong for, for some people's liking. Um, I'm just sort of doing that so that we can see what's going on in the adjustment. But this may be a bit too intense. That's totally fine. Again, you can lower that with the opacity slider there. So if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, you can see we're doing a really good job of creating that light and illuminating the areas in our scene that we want to be illuminated while darkening those areas in our background. And one thing I might do is I'm just going to clean up this darken adjustment a bit. I'll grab that mask there. And I'm gonna go in and I'm going to remove just a bit of that from the edge of that bench, just like that. So I think our local adjustments are looking pretty good. Let's go into the effects tab now. And the next sort of creative adjustment I want to apply into the scene is one of my favorite filters for instances like this. And this is the sun flare filter. Most of the time the sun flare filter can seem a bit tacky and sometimes it really doesn't do anything to the image other than making it look unnatural. But in situations like this, when we have a nice blurred background and there's some light coming in, this sun flare is going to look really awesome. So let's just make sure it's in place. I'm just going to flip it so that it's directly over where we want it to be beaming in. And I think it's, it's already coming to life. It's looking really great so far, just like that. Now let's add a couple more creative filters to sort of stylize the scene. I'll add a vignette filter. And the reason that I want to add a vignette filter is because we have a lot of light in the corners. And I think this vignette filter could really just tame those a bit and have us focus more on the bench and you know the, the, central, the central area of our image. So I'll use Big Softy, it's a really popular one. Now, whenever you're using a vignette, you really want to pay attention to the shadow tones because if I hold down my J key and my keyboard, I'm creating a lot of, of true black in there that I don't want. So let's go into the gear icon for this vignette filter and let's use this slider here for the shadows and that's going to protect these shadows from that vignette. So if I hold down the J key, you can see it brings in a lot of true black and as I protect those, it removes that true black while still maintaining that awesome vignetting that we want. And I think we could add on maybe one last filter. Let's add on dynamic contrast and I'm going to paint this dynamic contrast into the bench. So let's go into the masking options. Let's invert the mask. Remember white reveals and black conceals. We're concealing the mask. And now let's paint this dynamic contrast filter into this bench here. And I'm just going to increase the opacity quite a bit. Don't have to be too precise with the detail. I think that looks pretty great, just, just like that. And let's make it quite intense. I'm just going to use Surreal. And then I'm going to lower the opacity until it fits the scene a bit. Just like that. Maybe one last filter just to sort of even things out. Let's add the sunshine filter. And then let's go into the develop tab. And I think one last maybe quick adjustment that we could do is just warm things up a bit. And I think warming things up a bit is, is gonna even all of these colors out and make everything a bit more matching. So let's just warm it up to about 4275. Nothing crazy, just a nice bit of warmth in there to you know make it a bit more lively and also sort of more reflective of that, that fall scene. And one real quick thing I'm going to do is just head into the local adjustments tab. I'll select that light local adjustment and I'm just going to tone it down maybe just a little bit. Perfect, I think that looks awesome like that. And there we go. That's how to relight your scene with some local adjustments. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.